Hey guys, welcome back to YouTube channel to go funny lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Thank you for 21,000 subscribers. You guys are the best. Keep subscribing, keep liking, keep commenting, keep sharing. And um, please motivate me by giving me stuff to react to. Just drop the name or the link down below and I'll be more than glad to check it out. So today I'm going to be reacting to exposing the corruption in the halal industry food documentary so without wasting time let's get into the video what if everything you knew about what is and isn't halal is totally wrong what if you found out that the very meat you eat isn't really halal in a multi-billion dollar industry such as the halal industry there are so many hidden disturbing truths that have threatened the integrity of halal meat it's shocking but unfortunately a sad reality over the last couple of months, One Path Network has launched an investigation alongside industry experts, scholars and halal certifiers to find out what is truly going on in the halal industry. Halal food is basically defined as that which is permissible for the Muslim to consume. Islamically, it's our obligation to ensure our meat is halal. It's good to mention a principle that we find in Usul al-Fiqh that the scholars mention. They say everything around you is pure and halal until proven otherwise. There are exemptions to it, one of it being meat. When it comes to meat, it's actually the opposite. All meat is haram until proven otherwise. When it comes to halal meat, there are certain regulations that determine what can and can't be consumed. You have conditions that have to be met in the slaughterment, in the animal being slaughtered, in the tool being used, and what has to be recited when slaughtering. So when it comes to the slaughterment, the requirement is that they be a Muslim or that they be from Ahl al-Kitab, a Jew or a Christian. With regards to the animal, the animal has to be a halal animal. Chickens, halal, cows, sheep, goats, they're all halal. Then the tool that you use, the requirements is that it be a sharp tool, preferably made from metal that cuts with the least amount of pain. And then also when the slaughter is happening, the name of Allah must be mentioned. Traditionally, fulfilling these requirements has never been a problem for Muslims. But now, due to the large scale global demand for meat and the development of modern technology, the halal slaughter process, as we know it, has been met with new challenges. Now you're talking about companies that are worth billions of dollars that are slaughtering hundreds of thousands, if not millions of animals, you know, uh, on a weekly or a daily basis. So with that, there's a lot of, it comes with a lot of ambiguity. Are these conditions that are specified in Sharia being met in these animals that are being slaughtered or are they not? With increasing demand to streamline the halal slaughter process, many compromises have unfortunately been introduced. This includes the increased difficulty to state the basmala, cross-contamination with non-halal meats, and the use of stunning before slaughter. With such drastic changes paving their way into the industry, pressure has mounted on halal certifiers to work with abattoirs to ensure that halal regulations are still being met. Ideally, halal certifiers would be responsible to oversee the slaughter process and allow Muslims to identify what meats are halal. This is what many of us would assume, but our investigations have shown otherwise. With more and more damning reports of dubious halal certificates coming out, Muslims are beginning to reconsider who they can truly trust in certifying their foods. It's simply not enough to place our reliance on just any halal certifier. I don't think it's good enough for a Muslim in general just to say, okay, um, this person is certified and I'm happy with that. It's very important to make sure you recognize what is a, a true and genuine halal certification um, and try to uh, stake out those certification bodies and who they certify and consume those kind of products. This fact is only aggravated once we consider the sheer amount of halal certifiers currently operating in Australia. The shocking truth is, in the Australian local meat market, anyone can open a halal certification company. In fact, to prove just how easy it is, we've just set up our very own halal certification body with little to no effort. All it took was a few clicks, and now it's ready for issuing halal certification. Any business can apply for a halal certificate if they so wished. It's that easy. 
Some halal food suppliers have even taken it upon themselves to self-certify their own businesses. To make matters worse, when it comes to the local halal market in Australia, there is no overseeing body that regulates or oversees halal certifies operations. So the local market um, is unregulated in Australia. When it comes to the domestic market, unfortunately, there are too many inconsistencies and translations, let alone there's no one governing the, the overall consistency of the halal standard, which then allows self-certifiers to essentially take their plate and run with it. How can the community trust certification then? Locally here. Any, any halal certification? I mean, we, we're getting pork pies that are being certified Look, as halal. Myself, I don't, I don't trust. If you talk about local market, I don't trust the certification, uh, the local certifier here. This isn't to say that all certifiers are operating illegitimately. But rather, there are clear holes in the way certification is taking place, and these issues must be resolved. As previously mentioned, one of the conditions of meat being permissible to consume is to ensure that it is slaughtered by a sharp blade. This condition is however jeopardized by the introduction of modern laws that require animals to be stunned prior to slaughter. So as you may be aware, uh, stunning pre-slaughter is, is a regulation and law in Australia, so it must be done. Um, so we, with that said, electric stunning is permissible as long as it sits within the guidelines of what the outline is of Sharia. So do you actually specify uh, or regulate the electric stunning process? We do, yes. So there, there is a level of, um, for example, uh, volts that must be used, um, certain procedures for the animal to regain consciousness, for example, is one very important one, so that the animal doesn't die when it gets um, stunned. While most stunning processes would render the animal momentarily unconscious, certain methods of stunning in fact have proven to cause the animal to be killed. This has been shown in the use of gas stunning for chickens, where the effect of stunning are non-reversible and fatal. الصعق يخدر إما بالماء المكهرب أو الآن بالغاز بالغاز مثلاً والآن أهل الخبرة والكثير منهم يقول أن هذا الغاز يتسبب في موت الدجاج سواء ذبح أم لا هو في الأخير ينتهي به الأمر إلى الموت وهذا هذه إشكالية شرعية كبرى جداً لأن هذه الدجاجة قبل أن تذبح قبل أن يقطع المريء والحلقوم والودجان هي في حكم الميتة. This gassing of the chickens is very problematic. Chickens that are gassed tend to die before you've even slaughtered them. That's problematic. Does that make them halal to consume? That becomes haram. You know, the animal has died before slaughtering it as a result of the gassing. It's haram to consume. Although gas stunning has, for the most part, been declared Islamically unlawful by the majority of certifiers. Our investigations have shown otherwise. No, we don't accept gas stunning and none of the international standards accept gas stunning. I'm talking about ISMA in Emirates. I'm talking about HAC in Turkey, uh, SMIC, JAKIM, MOI, MOIS, all these standards. They don't accept gas stunning. In UK and Europe, long time ago, they used to call it gas killing, not stunning. In Australia here, I don't know why the, some of the local certifiers accepted it. It's only accepted locally, but overseas not accepted. Does Anik Halal allow for gas stunning of chicken? Definitely not. So Anik Halal is of the view that um, gas stunning is, is not, uh, not allowed. From what I understand, there is nowhere around the world that they allow for gas stunning or approved under any halal guidelines. Unfortunately, I am aware of certain certifiers um, doing uh, gas stunning, even though it doesn't fit within the guidelines and it should be removed. What would you say to the certifier that's uh, certifying gas stunned chicken? It's a carrion, it's a dead animal. It's mayita. If they're doing it unintentionally, um, then they need to revisit the halal laws and regulations around the world that's known uh, and fix it uh, as quick as possible. If they're aware of it, it's, uh, it's a catastrophe, even worse, because uh, we are putting something that's non-halal into the consumer's hands and into obviously their families and so forth. Our investigations have revealed that one of Australia's most prominent halal certified chicken slaughterhouses is currently using gas stunning. 90% of the Australian chicken here, or birds, they actually gas stunned. And why does the industry use gas stunning at the moment? From a business perspective, they, uh, it's much cleaner, it's more efficient, uh, and it's a cheaper process, okay? Uh, but halal uh, integrity, it's not halal. We sat down with a Muslim slaughterman who worked at the facility. 
We have hidden his identity for his own protection. This is what he had to say. So was gas stunning used at the facility that you worked at? Yeah, gas stunning was used at this facility, yes. And was this passed off as halal certified? Yes, it was passed and halal certified, yes. And did you see any issues with the gas stunning process? Yeah, I've noticed when they give a gas in the gas chamber, when the chicken comes out of the gas chamber and uh, when they start putting the chicken on the belt, not a single chicken moves for a second, not even for a second. So it's very hard to differentiate if the chicken is alive or dead. So how would you know if the chicken has died after the gassing? I took out three chicken on a different occasion, different shifts and different times and different chicken from the row uh, on the belt. And uh, I took the chicken out and left it on the side to see if the chicken survives. But not a single chicken came to life. So pretty much the chicken was dead and I had to throw it in the dead bin after about three, four minutes. So after the gassing, the chickens died? Yeah, after the gassing, when the chicken comes from the belt, the chicken died. The chicken was dead. We done uh, our experiment, our own experiment in gas stunning. We've got uh, like scientifically approved report, seven out of 10, that's the figure we've got. Um, they, they actually killed uh, from the stunning. 70%. So 70%. I have taken some birds out of the, uh, the, the line and then put it on the, on the floor. But unfortunately, none of them, they survived. None of them, they came back to life. So the gas is turning, uh, maybe from non-halal uh, perspective, it may be okay for them. But I definitely, I do not condone the gas is turning should be, should be employed in the halal industry. And would you feel comfortable eating the chicken that was slaughtered in that facility? To be honest, I gave up chicken since then. I'm not eating any chicken, any chicken. The question as to whether or not gas stunning can be regulated to meet halal standards into the future is up for debate. However, the way the process is carried out today is completely out of the question for multiple reasons. The lack of scientific evidence made public by certifiers and underlying confidentiality agreements between certifiers and abattoirs giving no transparency to the community. Yet, gas stunning is only a fraction of the deeper rooted problems plaguing the halal industry. The industry is riddled with dishonesty, financial corruption, negligence, and more. Now I know what you're thinking. This is way too overwhelming to digest, and there's little we can do. Some say it's simply too impractical to feed millions of people through halal processes, and we should no longer bother. Well, actually, no, not really. The Muslims in the West are the right people, but they have a big role, and they have a اجتماعي والسياسي واقتصادي كذلك ومن حقهم كذلك أن يطالبوا بأن توفر لهم الجهات المعنية بهذا من اللحم الحلال الذي يوافق دينهم من غير أن يضطروا إلى أن يتنازلوا عن بعض الثوابت في دينهم وفي إسلامهم وهذا ميسور وممكن إذا اجتمعت كلمة المسلمين واهتموا بالجانب الشرعي لقضية الحلال as a matter of fact, as of right now, there are several countries that have a working sustainable halal processing model that feeds millions of people on a daily basis. The Australian government itself has proven to uphold halal standards when it comes to the export market by enlisting an independent regulatory body to oversee all halal certifier operations. Why is it that the same scrutiny is not being applied to the local halal industry within Australia? Why is it that high standards can be set and maintained for vegan, kosher, and organic products, but not for the halal industry. The truth is, if there's anyone who could make the biggest impact, it's you, the consumer. You have the power to change everything wrong with the halal industry. First and foremost, as, as consumers, and, and being myself personally, we need to start demanding for our certifiers, our Islamic leaders, for an independent um, body to come in and oversee the halal industry. Number one, this will give everyone the confidence that everything is followed to a standard and is being managed properly. It gets rid of the soft certifiers, which is currently happening at the moment, which then allows people to, to doubt the industry. Be aware, be aware what's around you. Um, things will change, times will change, and it's all in the process, but things take time. We'd like for the Muslim community in general to work with us and hold people accountable that are not following the processes. It all comes back to the consumer. We are the consumers, and if these companies or these uh, slaughterhouses and these 
uh, halal certifiers see that there is genuine concern in the Muslim community for more regulation to take place, more transparency, then you'll see them falling in line. But if there's no concern, then we can't really uh, accept, uh, expect any change and we can't blame really anyone but ourselves. You can choose to be empowered with knowledge about just how halal your food really is. Businesses and industries make decisions based on how we as consumers spend our money. And through this, we can ensure our voices are heard. For Muslims, eating halal isn't just about avoiding haram. It's about pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's about obtaining the blessings of Allah in our lives. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah is pure and only accepts that which is pure. So by consuming halal, we ensure that we have the blessings of Allah in our lives. We become those who have their supplications accepted and become those who are beloved to Allah. And if we truly want to experience the fruits of obtaining Allah's pleasure, then we need to act now. If you enjoyed this video along with all the other content that One Path Network produces, please support us so we can create more beneficial content for the world. Go to onepathnetwork.com and you can support us from as little as $1 a day. Jazakumullah khair for your support. I was telling myself while watching this that this is very hard to like fix until he mentioned the vegans, the organic things and if they can sort that out then this shouldn't be an issue. At the end of the day it all comes to the consumer, the customer. The customer controls what's, what's um, going to give these people profits at the end of the day and it's only fair to respect people and what they take why feed why feed dead animals to people of course at the end of the day the animal is going to be dead but i actually know not just muslims but if for example a chicken just dies you can't eat it you don't know what caused its death you know and you throw it away and if it's if it's haram to people respect their religion give them what they want but like he said at the end of the day it's up to muslims to unite to unite and figure out the way forward or for the governments of these countries not just australia but worldwide to figure out how to um tackle the market from the islamic point of view i guess not islamic but for people that don't want to eat meat that's haram you know and just respect that it's just not for them uh, let me know what you guys actually think and I'm sure this is an issue that can be solved. Uh, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and of course so don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next reaction video. If there's anything you want me to react to let me know down below and I'll be more than glad to react to it.